So what's, your, what's cognitive load and why does it matter and who is cognitive load on weekends? Your brain and my brain, when we're focusing on something, only we only have so much power. Yours have a lot more than mine, but they only have you know, a finite amount of power to focus on any task. And let's say you're listening to a lecture, trying to follow the lecture. If the lecture is presenting new concepts in unfamiliar language, that's going to increase the cognitive load. And therefore, you're going to tire faster, your attention span is going to be shorter, and you're going to start to drift earlier. So it wears you down. Se você estiver em ocasião, no passado, de atender e assistir uma leitura numa outra língua, qualquer outra língua, que não seja a vossa língua materna, vocês deviam ter tido a, a, a impressão que é muito mais difícil atender, assistir, fazer, prestar atenção a uma leitura numa outra língua do que na língua materna. In other words, if you're trying to focus on a lecture in a second or third language, not your first language, not your mother's language, it's always going to take more cognitive energy. It's always going to take more power. It's always going to tire you faster, even if you're almost bilingual. It still wears you out faster. So one of the issues that our students have who are international students who didn't come from an English-speaking background is, however smart and powerful and dedicated they are, the cognitive load for them is greater than it is for an English speaker. If they're not, if they're, if they're I should say this right way, if they're first-generation college students and they don't have all the social background, all that coded knowledge that you have if your parents are academics or educated people, it's going to take them more energy. If they're from another culture, it's going to take them more energy. And therefore, the cognitive load is greater for those students at those reasons. Now, for those reasons. It's also greater for all students if you're dealing with things that are unfamiliar to them. So here's one way to manage cognitive load. When you're preparing your lectures, think about it this way. You've got new concepts and you've got, well, let's make it simple, new concepts and new terminology, let's say, or new symbols. In stats, we've got all these symbols, you know, all these Greek letters, and all the names of these things that are, you know, not everyday sorts of things. So I've got new concepts that I want to, to learn. There's new terminology. If I want to focus on the concept, I need to privilege that and make the terminology and the examples as simple as everyday and as well known to them as possible. In other words, I've got to lower the load, the unfamiliarity of the terminology if I want to get their attention on the concepts. If I want to focus on the terminology, I'd better use concepts and examples and pictures and all things that are familiar and absolutely take no energy to, to process. Because the cognitive load, if I raise both those things and give them unfamiliar everything, is going to wear them out very quickly and I won't be able to make good use of the lecture. So managing cognitive load, particularly for international students, is very critical. And it's one of the things that they should expect us to do as expert lecturers.